Hi there, I'm Stacy, the mixed media and classic artist behind Studio Stacy. In this week's video, I thought you might like to see some behind the scenes, some sneak peeks at some paintings. And without further ado, let's see the behind the scenes from this week at Studio Stacy. This week is all about finishing up some projects that I actually uncovered some very old projects that I uncovered a couple weeks ago when I cleaned the studio for the studio tour. If you're interested in the studio tour, I will put a link below and you can go check that out. But first up, I am finishing off a quilting project. They're actually quilted placemats. And I started this project, like I said, years ago. I took a class at a local sewing shop. They sell sewing machines and then they also have classes. And that sewing place is called Pins and Needles. If you're in Northeast Ohio, I highly suggest checking them out. It's a really great store. So I am just finishing off of the edges of those placemats so that we can eventually use them. I am by no means an expert seamstress or quilter. So if you are, I apologize because I am quite sure I am making a lot of mistakes here. So um, please don't judge the final result. But I just like to experiment around with diff other different art forms and such. And quilting is one of my favorite things to do. I love my sewing machine and um, yeah. So I just wanted to take you behind the scenes here and show you a couple sewing projects. It's now the next day and I normally like to start off my days in the studio painting. I am best as a in the morning. I'm very much a morning person and so I like to start off my days right away by painting and getting those creative juices flowing. Again, this is a painting that I've had laying around for a little while so it feels really nice to finally be diving back into it and getting some painting done and some paintings wrapped up. In the afternoon, once I'm done painting and had a bit of lunch, I like to do more businessy, less thinking, less creative things. And so here I'm just cutting apart some stickers for Studio Stacy. I'm going to be using these in my packaging. I am wrapping up the day by just finishing this blanket up. This is by Helen Shrimpton and I will leave a link below to her tutorial on how to sew this blanket, but it is finished and, or how to rather how to crochet the blanket. It's finished and I love it. Another day brings another day of painting. This time a, I'm starting with a new painting and I thought I would walk you through the process of how I think when I paint a painting. So here I am just going through my color swatches and picking out different blues and greens that I want to use. And you'll see in this next picture, 
I use these color swatches to pick out the colors because when the paint is poured into these blocks, these wax blocks, it looks a little bit different. So next up, I am starting out with some clear encaustic medium and just painting that on the painting. And I wanna really get a good texture on this because I'm trying to um, emulate forest and trees and that obviously has a lot of texture to it. So I'm really putting this paint on kind of sporadically and then of course fusing between each layer with my torch. And I'm just doing a light fusing with that torch as to not to get rid of that texture. So up next, I'm going to be adding a little bit more encaustic medium and then moving on to the encaustic paint itself. And you'll see here when I add in the encaustic paint, the different greens and the different blues, I don't worry about switching out my paintbrush between the different colors of greens and or the different colors of blues. I have one paintbrush that I use for greens, one paintbrush that I use for blues, reds, oranges, and so forth. Every once in a while, you will see me place my hands down on the painting, and that's just to see if that painting has been cooled off enough after I put the torch on it to add the next layer. And then here you'll see me adding in some clear encaustic medium onto my paint palette. And that just thins out the paints and makes them a little bit more translucent. I add in several more layers of encaustic paint. And then I also use some Durant Inktense pencils to for the next layers. And here you will see me using an oil stick just to fill in all those nooks and crannies and crevices and really bring out all of that texture that I just added in. I always like to wear gloves when I'm applying the oil stick just to be cautious and make sure I don't get any of that oil stick stuck on my fingers or my skin. And then after I have all of that oil stick rubbed into all of the nooks and crannies of the texture, I take a paper towel and really wipe all of that excess off. You don't want to have a lot of oil left on the painting because then it never really fully cures and you don't want to have that rubbing off on other layers or other paintings or people's walls when they get it. So I really make sure all of that oil is rubbed off and then of course fuse it with the torch to make sure it sinks into all those other layers. Adding in a few last minute details like a tree with some ink and I'm also then going back in and adding in some more encaustic paint to that tree just to really finish off the entire painting. I hope this was helpful or at least gave you a little bit of insight into my painting process. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to reach out and ask or drop them in the comments below. If you want to see more painting process videos like this, I'd love to know that as well. Um, definitely leave me a comment and let me know. All right. Thanks so much.
finishing out the day for some, with some editing for YouTube, and I will see you guys tomorrow. See you in the morning. Since this is the last work day of the week, I thought I would take it a little bit easy and make some encaustic medium. So encaustic medium, I mix in Damar crystals, which you'll see me pouring into this little griddle here. And I melt those down first. And Damar crystals are basically tree sap and it's in a crystallized form. And you'll see um, they melt down usually takes about 10 minutes, but <laughs> voila, they're melted already. And then I mix in some beeswax with that. It's refined beeswax and it comes in these one pound cakes, which is really nice. And you'll see that that tree sap is rather sticky and goopy, but um, once the beeswax gets melted in with it, it becomes nice and liquid. So you might see some brown flux in the um, liquid there, and that is actually from the tree sap. It doesn't come completely strained out, and it comes from nature. So, you know, you'll have some imperfections and some tree bark, if you will, in there. Once it's all melted down, though, I pour it into these little silicone bread pans and let them cool. And once that beeswax is pretty cool, it's still a little bit hot to the touch, but cool, I just pop it on out of the molds. And you'll see here as I turn over this one, you will see those brown specks or tree bark dirt, if you will, float to the bottom. And that's no good. So basically, because you don't want that in your painting, so I take a little scraper and I scrape all of those brown flecks off melt it back down in my griddle so nothing gets wasted and then do the process over again. And then very little gets wasted that way. Hi guys, a little different look today. This is my husband. <laughs> Um, we are in our basement going to attempt to clean out this room, which is the laundry room. And um, we've got piles of stuff and boxes and things. But there's flooring that we've had for at least a couple years, wouldn't you say? And it needs to be installed, which is the project that we're doing today. We have, or this weekend. We have um, absolutely no idea what we're doing. Never done this before. So um, let's see how it goes. Piece Any of cake. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Got the basement pretty much cleaned out. What's left? Those. You feeling strong? I am always. I'm more <laughs> concerned with you. <laughs> no problem. We got this. Ready? One, two, three. And voila! Done! Happy days.
Well guys, we've done it. The basement flooring is finally done and we put some stuff back in it and I thought we would show you the final result. <laughs> you can't see the flooring this way. <laughs> There's no floor. <laughs> okay, we'll show you the floor here, hang on. <laughs> hope you enjoyed that behind the scenes look at stuff. Like I said earlier, if you have any questions, definitely leave them below in the comments. I would be happy to hear from you and happy to answer any questions you have. Also, if you liked the video, I would really appreciate it if you gave me a big thumbs up. If you are not subscribed, please subscribe so you don't miss another video or any of this fun behind the scenes look. And if you are subscribed, and would like hit that notification little bell and that will notify you every time I release a new video. So as always, thanks so very, very much for watching. We'll talk to you soon. And bye for now.